Welcome to Friendship Baptist Church. We're so glad that you are with us and hope that you're praying for us because we're certainly praying for you. Our little church by the road is meeting again full time and we'd certainly love to have you come visit us. Sunday school, of course, is at 10 and worship services at 11 and then our Wednesday night is at 6. So please try to come out if you can. If not, just pray for us and continue to watch us online on Facebook and on YouTube. I'd like to talk to you tonight about detours, detours, and there's a lot of muddy roads out there. Did you know I was driving down the road the other day and it had been raining and, and, and I hit some mud and it had been washed out in the road and got my truck dirty and I got to thinking about muddy roads and detours. So I want to read to you from the book of Proverbs, the 14th chapter and the 12th verse. And here's what he says. There is a way that seems right to a man but its end is the way to death. Even in laughter the heart may ache, but the end of joy may be grief. The backslider in heart will be filled with the fruit of his ways, and a good man will be filled with the fruit of his ways. The simple believes everything, but the prudent gives thought to his steps. Listen to that again. There's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof or the ways of death. In the world we live today, there's a lot of roads that we need to take and there's a lot of roads that we don't need to take. God has a plan for our life and we certainly see that throughout Scripture. There's a lot of people in the Bible who took detours that did not work out too good. One of them that comes to mind is a man named Jonah. God had a plan for Jonah's life and Jonah had a different plan. So Jonah said, I'm, I'm going to take a detour. I'm, I'm going to do it a different way. And we all know the story about how that wound up. It didn't work out too good. We also read about in uh, the book of Genesis about a man named Noah. God had a plan and God told Noah to build the ark. Noah preached and he built the ark for years and people laughed and made fun of him. They, they took the wrong road. They took a detour and they wound up getting killed because of that. What about in the Bible where we read about the prodigal son? The prodigal son had everything, had life going his way. Life was good, but, but just because he, he wasn't in control of his life like he thought he should, he said, I'm going to take a detour. And his detour led straight to the pig pen. And so sometimes the road of life that we're on looks harmless enough to follow. But if we look again, we will see that the road that we're following will lead to death and destruction. There are a lot of people out today who are addicted to something. It might be uh, sex, it might be drugs, it might be alcohol, it might be work, it might be church. It, it could be your family, it could be anything. But that detour will take you away from the path that God has for you. And in the book of Proverbs, we need to learn from the book of Proverbs. Because someone said this, a proverb is a short statement that is drawn from the long experiences of life. And in the book of Proverbs, third chapter, it says this, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lead not unto thy own understanding. Just like it said, we don't need to follow our own path. We don't need to follow the way that seems right to us. We need to lean on what God tells us to do. We need to lean on the Word of God and let God lead us and guide us and direct us. And I can certainly tell you from personal experience, anytime I follow my way, I always get in trouble. It never winds up like I think it should or like I want it to. But when I follow God, when I trust God, and when I lean on God for my understanding, then it always turns out right. Now, I want you to listen. I didn't say the way was easy. I didn't say that the, that the road was off a bed of roses, but it always ends up right. So, in today, how do we do this? How do, how do we follow God? How do we lean on God and, and not follow our own desires? Because I'm going to tell you, our flesh is strong. And it wants us to follow what it wants. And, and we can look at things in lust. We can think about things in lust. And we can, we can do all these things. And we know how to do that naturally. But how do we lean on God and not on our own understanding? How do we let Him lead us and guide us instead of ourselves doing it? Well, the first thing you got to make sure is that you're saved. You got to make sure that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and that the Holy Spirit lives inside you. You cannot follow God 
by your own will. And, and I'm going to give you a great example. Peter's in the boat. The boat is being tossed in the storm. Peter said, Jesus, I want to come to you because Jesus is walking on the water. And Jesus says, come, Peter. And as long as Peter is focusing on Jesus Christ and his relationship with him, he's walking on water. But when he took his eyes off, he started to sink. And we are the same way. When we take our eyes off Christ, we put it on ourselves. And when we put it on ourselves, we will start sinking. We will start going down the wrong path. We will get on those muddy roads. And so we need to lean on God. So how do we do it? And I'm glad you asked me. Because the Word teaches us that we need to look up. Look up. Isaiah 45, God said, Look unto me, and be you saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. Right there, God said there is no other, so we need to look up to God for our salvation. You've got to be saved to be able to lean on God. So where does our salvation come from? Not from inside of me, but from God Almighty. For God loved us first. Jesus died for us. He paid the price. So we look up to God for our salvation. We don't look for our works. We don't look for our money. We don't look for our name. We don't look for our family name. We look up to God. And we need to look up to our Creator and realize that He is our Creator and Maker. Isaiah 51. Hearken to me, all ye that follow after righteousness. You seek that the Lord look upon the rock which you were hewn, and to the hole of the pit from whence you came. Now let me put that in plain English. We need to realize that God is our Creator God is the one who reached down into that hole that I had dug by my sinful life. God is the one who saved me and pulled me out of that pit. That is what God did. So preacher, okay, I understand now I'm lost. I understand I got to look to God. So let me make one more point about that. The Holy Spirit has to call you before you can be saved. You just don't wake up in the morning and say, okay, I'm, I'm tired of living this sinful life. I've had enough fun. I'm going to get saved today. It does not work that way. God has to call you. So, what do we do? All right, let's just say you're tired of living like you are, but you don't know if God is calling you or not. Or let's just say that you, that you are saved and you realize that you have taken a detour. You're on the muddy road. You're like the prodigal son. You woke up one day and you smell like a pig. What are you going to do? The same thing the lost man is going to do. We need to look up to God in prayer. Amen. Psalms 5 and 3. My voice shall thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up. That's what David said. He says, God, you will hear me when I cry. You, he says, God, I'm talking to you and, and you are listening to me. So we need to cry out to God. We need to quit worrying about America. We need to quit worrying about our 401k. We need to quit worrying about all this other junk that will put us on the wrong path and cry out to God, pray to God, say, God, I want you to direct my path. And the Bible says that if God is directing our path, we can have a thousand fall here and 10,000 fall here. And buddy, we're straight and we are safe as an arrow. Because God is leading us. We also need to be looking up to our high priest and our mediator. Look at what it says in Hebrews 12. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is the author of our faith. What does that mean? He is the very beginning of our faith. An author means he wrote the book on faith, y'all. He is the one that said, I will pay that price. It started in heaven and it ended here on earth and then he went back to heaven. Does that make sense? He is the beginning and the end of our faith. He is the beginning and the end of our salvation. He is our high priest and our mediator. Now, now, let me put this in real plain English. A high priest in the biblical times would go into the Holy of Holies 
and make a sacrifice to have all the sins of the people roll forward a year. The, the priest that would go in, he had to have his sins confessed. He would have a robe on with bells on that robe, and they would tie a rope or put a chain around his ankle. And as long as those bells were dingling and he was moving around in there, he was good. But if he went in the Holy of Holies and his sin was not confessed, God would strike him down, the bells would quit ringing, and they'd drag him out. Jesus paid the price on the cross for us 100%. And then he went and he, take, he went back to heaven and he sat down at God the Father at his right hand. But before he did that, he took his blood and he sprinkled it on the Holy of Holies, the seat, and then he sat down. What did he do that for? Because he had planned it in the beginning and he finished it. So he started it and he ended it. So he is our high priest. Now, now that brings us to a, a mediator. What does that mean? All right, it means that when we are saved, we are not perfect. Can I get an amen on that? We are still in the flesh. And we are going to make mistakes. And our mediator, Jesus Christ, is going to his Father and making intercession for us. He is saying, God, that's mine. God, he's covered in the blood. Because Satan is the accuser of the brethren, and when we make a mistake, he is up there shaking his hand and fist at God, saying, look at your children down there. And Jesus is saying, hey, Satan, all you see is my blood. All you see is my blood. They are covered in the blood. It's just like a mother, a child get in trouble, and the mother makes intercession to the dad, or they used to. I don't know how it works today. But, but the mother would make intercession for the child and plead the child's case to the dad. And then the dad said, okay. So that's exactly what Jesus does. So then not only is he our high priest and our mediator, but we need to look up to him for our full redemption. And the Bible says this, when you see all these things come to pass, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And if we ever, ever would see these things come to pass, it's in the world we're living today. Y'all need to look up because our redemption is drawing nigh. And I'm going to tell you, when, when the clouds part, and there's a shout, and, and the church is called out of here, it's too late for you that are left behind. It's going to be a thousand times harder to get saved because the Spirit is going to have a limited power at that time. The age of grace will end at that time. Today's the day of salvation. Today's the day of salvation. I don't know if I'm going to get through this whole lesson tonight. Not only do we need to look up, God's Word teaches us to remember now listen, and I want you to get this plain. We got too many Christians who are like the Israelites who are remembering what it was like in Egypt and wanting to go back. There is a difference in remembering where you come from and wanting to go back there. We, we need to remember what a sinner we were, but we don't want to go back there, okay? Revelation 2, 5, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works. We need to realize and remember that I was a sinner headed to hell. Now I'm a saint of God. Now I am born again and blood bought. We need to realize that it is God that brought me out of that pit. I couldn't even crawl out of the pit. We don't want to go back to the pit. I guarantee you the prodigal son never wanted to go back to the pig pen. He remembered where he come from. Amen. But we don't go back. And a lot of people will take this verse, And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. They take that verse all wrong. What he is saying is we should not want to go back there. But it is okay to remember where we come from. So, And we're going to get to more of that in a minute. But every day we are given a chance to start over. Every morning when you open your eyes, you've given a, you're given another chance to not make the mistakes that you made before. And we need to realize that we can look back at our condition that we were before Jesus saved us, and we can praise God that He saved us. You cannot do that if you are so consumed with how good you are and you think you can earn your way into heaven. 
The only way you can praise God for being saved is to realize that I was a sinner and now I'm a saint. And I didn't do anything to get it. I didn't do anything to get it. It's okay to remember where you fell, but I certainly don't want to go back there and fall down again. It's okay to remember that, that I sinned right there, but I don't want to do it again. It's okay to remember that I don't need to do that because I did it once and it didn't work out. It's okay. It's okay. So we can remember, but we don't want to go back. Then God's Word teaches us to look inside, inward. Look inside. Look inside what's inside us. Well, preacher, let's say I got a heart, I got a liver, I got lungs. No, it's not what I'm talking about. Look inside you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Look inside you for the change that happened the day you accepted Christ. The old man is dead. Well, it don't feel like it. Well, the Bible says it is. I don't care how you feel. The old man is in control because you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to control you. And, and the Bible says, and somebody just read it right before I got up here, that we take off the old, we take off the corruptible, and we put on incorruption. And we need to look inside and see the power that is in us. Hebrews 12, 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and therefore many be defiled. What does that mean? All right, let me see. Here's the problem. We read this and we don't ever stop and think about what it means. We have the Holy Spirit in us. And when we look for the Holy Spirit in us, we are not looking for the evil. I'm not looking for the grudges. I'm not looking for the people that's hurt me. I am looking for the fruit of the Spirit. And how does that work? Here's the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, long-suffering. All of those. So when, when God is working through me and I'm looking inside, I see those fruits of the Spirit. I see the love and the joy and the peace. But when the fruit of the flesh is in operation, I see just the opposite. So when I look inside, we have a tendency to remember the bad and we get all bent out of shape. When I look inside, I need to see that I am a new creation. Amen. Psalm 119, 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy ways. Is God's Word in your heart or is there TV programs in your heart? What, what's in there? And see, if you really look inward, you might not like what you see. If you really look inward and say, God, show me how I really am, it's probably not good. But the grace of God is sufficient. And here's what we say, God, man, I got, I got too much of me in there. The Apostle Paul, who we, we think was a super Christian. Listen, there is no such thing as a super Christian. All it is is Paul was closer to God than you are. That's it. But we look at Paul and say, boy, I wish I could have that. Well, you can, but you got to do what Paul said. Paul said, I must decrease and you must increase. I've got to get rid of me and get God in that void. God created us for something to be right here. There's something missing when we're born. And man tries to fill it with everything he can think of. And mostly tries to fill it with himself. But the only thing that's going to fill it is the Spirit of God. That's why Jesus said, I must go because God Father is going to send you a helper. And that helper is the Holy Spirit. So look inside and see what is controlling us. So that brings me to my next point. God's Word teaches that we are to look down where we won't make these detours. And whosoever shall exalt himself self shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. That's in Matthew. I'm going to tell you, we have too many Christians today, or make-believe Christians, that think too much of themselves. <laughs> I, I'm nothing. I'm nothing and you're nothing. James 4 and 6 says this, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. 
I've known people who are proud of their humility. <laughs> That's how messed up we are. James 4.10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. The Bible says the first will be last and the last will be first. See, even the disciples went and got their mama and went to Jesus and tried to argue over who was going to sit at his right hand and his left hand. See, we, we want to elevate ourselves when we are to humble ourselves. And the only way you can have true humil humility is to realize that you are a sinner saved by grace, that Jesus Christ did all of the work, not you, and that the Holy Spirit has revealed that to you and you are willing to die daily. Now, God's Word also, if we want to miss these detours, we need to look outward. Outward. Well, I always look outward. Let's talk about this. Here's what the Bible says in John 4. Say not you that there are yet four months and then the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white and ready for harvest. <laughs> we take detours when we look at ourselves and not others. We need to have compassion on others. If we are led by the Spirit, and the first fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. If we look at others with love, we will not have a critical spirit. Something spoke to me this week. Uh, uh, I think last week, President Biden fell down the stairs three times going up to Air Force One. And somebody put a thing on that showed one of these stair lifts going up. And I laughed at that and I thought it was funny. Uh, but somebody said, we ought to pray for him instead of, instead of laughing at him. And that convicted me. You know why? Because he needs salvation. He needs that. Well, well, you're judging him. No, I'm not. And any man that stands up and supports abortion needs salvation. Just that plain and simple. But we need to look at others and have compassion. We need, we need to look at the lost and realize that that is them, and I once was just like them. Well, I had never been a drug addict. No, you hadn't, but you gossiped. Well, I had never been an alcoholic. No, but you lusted. <laughs> well, I had never done this. No, but you did this. See, we all have our own little sins. And the Bible says if I commit one sin, I commit them all. So I have no place in my life should I look at others and say I'm better than they are? The Bible clearly teaches that the, the, the good man from the synagogue stood up and was praying to God and he beat his chest. He said, hey, I'm glad I'm not like that sinner. And the sinner wouldn't even look up to heaven and said, God, forgive me. Which one went away more justified? We got to get over this. I'm something. I am nothing without him. My wife's favorite verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, which is perfect. But we got to get the I out of the way and realize that it's Christ that does the strengthening. Amen. And to my last one, God's Word teaches that we are to look forward. I had somebody tell me this week, Preacher, I don't see anything to look forward to. My grandkids are going to have a terrible time. This old world is a mess. Things are not getting any better. Well, I think if you uh, open God's Word, it was pretty bad in Genesis. Uh, it was pretty bad in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It was pretty bad in the Acts and the rest of them. So what does God say about looking forward? Titus 2 and 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What do we have to look forward to? Him coming back. This is not my home. I'm just passing through. It am my home. You ought to turn over to Philippians 3 and 18 and read that, and we don't have time tonight. Hebrews 9, 28, So Christ once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for Him, he shall appear. Listen, y'all, I'm going to tell you, you, by this verse here, when he comes back and he jerks the church out of here, we are going to be gone. And you're going to say, well, how in the world can people not see what's going on? Because they are not looking for Christ. Amen. We as, as Christians need to be looking for Christ. It says this, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent, 
be diligent that you may see these things come to pass. Whew. I don't know about y'all, but I don't like detours. I got I got lost up in the mountains one time, and, and of course, as us men are, we do not want to stop and ask for directions. I wound up two states out of the way from where I should have been. That's no joke. But I was making good time. <laughs> so we don't need to take detours. We need to lean on God. We need to allow Him to guide our footsteps. And the last thing I'm going to say is this. His ways are better than my ways or your ways. Thank you for listening to Friendship Baptist Church. Please come to visit us if you can. Please pray for us if you will. And we'd love to see you. We'd love to help you. Little Church by the Road in Center Star, Alabama. The address P.O. Box 3, Killing 35645. Thank you.